I will stand by the fact that this has been the best year of Olympic basketball we've ever seen. And it's really because you didn't have to be a Team USA fan to really enjoy what was happening. Like there was South Sudan who made history this year. Greece had themselves a nice little run and Giannis was arguably one of the most dominant players in this entire tournament. Japan didn't really do anything, but they had that one good game and they also got scanned by the officials and Rui Hachimura got injured. Yeah, okay, things weren't good for them. France has a super bright future after getting their second silver medal in a row. And now they have Victor Wembanyama, so I'm sure they're gonna be dominating for quite some time now but now that the olympics are over my biggest question is will team usa ever be the same or was this really the last dance as we all know it now that is a question we're going to get into just a little bit later because i feel like it would be wrong for team usa to go out win this gold medal and have me immediately talk about the future and not talk about what they just accomplished and by the way just a quick disclaimer i am going to be using actual olympic footage from this year and they really don't like that which means that they are going to copyright this video and i'm not going to make any money off of it so instead of running an ad for you guys if you could just like and subscribe that would help support me just as much thank you very much now we can go ahead and talk about steph curry with this being his first ever olympics i have this odd feeling that the media just didn't want him to be good for some reason with the way that they were talking about him saying that he really needs to step his game up if usa wants to win gold when in reality there's just a lot of different roles that you have to play on this team and we're going to talk about devin booker later on because he is easily the biggest sign of that exactly playing different roles than what you may do on your nba team but some of these media guys were not lying when they said that he needed to set things up. Like when we look at the stat muse tweet right here, we could see that in Curry's first four games, he put up 29 points, five three pointers, and was shooting a god awful 25% from three. But in the last two games alone, he has put up 60 points, 17 three pointers, while shooting 65% from three absolutely fucking ridiculous also if you for some reason didn't think that Stephen curry was a clutch player before today's performance against france alone should have changed your mind just like that another person who was getting disrespected like no other was joel Embiid. i mean they had the whole passport situation and the whole citizenship and who he should be playing for the guy was getting booed every single time he touched the ball and when it comes to the actual basketball aspect he was actually sucking ass in a lot of the showcase games and earlier performances but he did step up not saying that he was the mvp or the best player by any means but he did step up and became a better version of himself it was also very cool to see the rest of the team usa roster really get behind Embiid and show him support because i'm not gonna lie i don't know how many of these guys actually liked Embiid from the nba from his performances there and all the foul baiting stuff you know i don't want to be negative but i have a feeling at least some of these players were not the biggest Embiid fans but yeah Embiid was able to go in there and kind of prove everyone wrong and still put up some good performances anthony edwards came into day one of training camp and said i am the number one option which was like what the fuck are you saying right now and he had some good games don't get me wrong i definitely wouldn't call him the number one option but his role on this year's team usa roster is a lot bigger than just winning a gold medal and playing in a couple games and getting some points or whatever devin booker i'm just gonna put the tweet up right here with him quote tweeting kyle kuzma's tweet that says usa basketball better get some nba stars that know how to play a role anybody can be nice with the ball in their hands but can you be cool with defending and going to the corner for a few possessions and as you can see booker said i'll do it and he did exactly that even steve kerr said that devin booker was definitely their unsung mvp the guy was an absolute menace on defense and kind of just played that role that i don't think many people expected him to play so yeah i wanted to make it clear that i am giving devin booker his flowers jason tatum oh man it's actually such an unfortunate situation for him a lot of sitting on the bench when it comes to the crucial games later on in the tournament but that's just kind of what happened like i really don't agree with steve kerr for what he did and, and how he handled that situation like not even giving him a couple minutes especially in that serbia game granted they ended up coming back but had usa lost that game all of the blame would have gone towards steve kerr for not putting in jason tatum and not really making adjustments which is completely understandable then again every time jason tatum was in the game i did see a lot of people saying hey we got to get jason tatum off the court so i don't really know how to feel about the jason tatum situation whether or not he'll be back for 2028 i have no clue uh, i think he's waiting to see who the coach is that year and if it's joe Missoula, he will most likely sign up and the other guy that was sitting on the bench the majority of the time with jason tatum was tyrese halliburton and tyrese halliburton has the same kind of role to me that anthony edwards had on this team besides the playing time and like actual role i think for those two guys it was more about getting them established with the usa culture and what it means to be on team usa and how to perform and how to play 
play a certain role because these two guys are actually key factors of the future of Team USA. Like the bittersweet part of this entire tournament was that this was going to be the last time we would see LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Stephen Curry all play in USA uniforms. Now that's not 100% confirmed. Kevin Durant might come back and try to get his fifth gold medal, but let's just assume for five minutes that they are not going to be back to play in the Olympics. That's really when I start to get concerned about the future for Team USA because we have always been known as the team and country to have a grip on basketball, right? We invented the sport. I know that the guy was Canadian. Still, USA invented it. But with the world getting better almost every single day and these absolute legends that have been running the game for so long and now kind of reaching their end point, I don't know how to feel about the next generation. And just to give you guys an idea as to some young guys that could come in in the next Olympics and try to run this shit, we have Paolo Bencaro, Chet Holmgren, Cade Cunningham, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum hopefully will be there, Jada, Booker, John Morant, Tyrese Halliburton, Bam Adebayo, a lot of these young guys that I do have a lot of belief in and I do think can actually do something, but I don't know. It just seems so scary to see a roster that doesn't have Kevin Durant or LeBron James on it. Only reason why I don't mention Steph Curry in that, by the way, is because this was still his like first year at doing this Olympic shit. But to me, the most important player for Team USA's future, whether or not he becomes a good player or not, is Cooper Flag. Because I don't know how many of you guys remember what he did in the training leading up to the Olympics. I mean, he was voted as the best player on the Team USA select team. That's a team that has other NBA talent. And with his draft being next year, he'll have a solid three years of NBA experience under his belt. I mean, I am calling it right now. We are going to be seeing a Cooper Flag Victor Wembanyama finals in the Olympics 2028 in Los Angeles. The environment is going to be intense. But yeah, I don't really want to talk about the future that much more because there's no point in speculating and saying that, oh, the USA is going to suck in four years because that's not really the point I'm trying to get at here. I'm more kind of saying that this is just the end of an era and I am a bit more concerned about the next generation than I am with this one. But I guess that's kind of easy to say when I can look back at this one and say that they won five gold medals in a row. That being said, these Olympic games have been so much fun to watch. I am just so happy we got to see some more basketball in this offseason. It is killing me that we have to wait at least another month for training camp to even start. I mean, I am dying right now. So let me know in the comments who you guys want to see play for Team USA or any other country in the 2028 Olympics. I'm always down there reading and responding to everyone. It's one of my favorite parts of making these videos is talking to you guys. And while you're down there, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Like I said earlier on in the video, this has no ads on it. So that will be the biggest way of supporting this channel and myself. And yeah, if you want to watch another one of my videos, there should be one up on the screen right now. If not, then I just forgot to add it. All right, see you guys later.